take a look at this. This is awesome, guys. This truck is so big. And I know this is the first time I'm actually talking in this video. That's because there's so much to go over with this truck that I feel like I really just need to take a moment and really walk you guys through it. I'm gonna remove these paper towels because these are from the water test, but check out this pump. This pump is massive. Take a look at the, uh, this is a 1 10th scale 550 motor from Traxxas. Compared to this water pump motor, it is huge. And for a good reason too, because it is a very powerful pump. As you guys can see, it is a 12 volt, uh, one gallon per minute water pump. It's actually really powerful and with a proper nozzle on the tip of the water hose, it's actually got a lot of pressure behind it. And as you guys saw in the demonstration off the deck, the water shoots very far away. I would say it's probably 20 to 30 feet out away from the truck. So that's a great amount of reach. As you can see, here is our receiver, the R6 FG. This is the six channel uh, receiver that goes to the radio link RC6GS. That's the uh, six channel transmitter. We've got the Hobbywing 1080 ESC in here. Uh, I chose this ESC because it's very affordable and it's actually a great ESC for the price. Um, I'm hoping to use more of these ESCs in future projects, which I've got a new project coming up pretty soon over the winter that we're going to use the Hobbywing 1080 ESC in. And up here, this is actually the switch mechanism for the water pump. I want to take you guys in a little closer to this because this is actually very cool. What we've got is a micro servo and this is a pressure switch. So this little uh, tab that's on top of here is very slightly pushing in when I press down on it. Uh, and basically what's happening is you've got, uh, it's a disconnect in between an electrical current. So right here, this is the plug that's gonna go to our 3S LiPo that's gonna power the water pump. So when I plug this in, the positive wire goes down to one side of this pressure switch. And then through the pressure switch on this side, here is the other end of the wire. This is the positive wire. As you can see, it's yellow here, but it turns red later on. Um, basically what happens is it's a disconnect. So when this pressure plate is pushed down, it actually connects the metal from both ends of the wire and finishes the current. It completes the electrical current. So all I needed to do was hook up a servo to accomplish that, basically do like what my finger is doing. So when the servo presses down, it connects the two wires together and uh, gives our water pump power. I was really fortunate to actually get a pressure switch like this. I actually had it in my uh, old electric box. So that was actually a great find that I was able to repurpose. Back here, of course, this is the transmission. We did this a while ago now. As you can see, everything is in. I put the wheel wells back on. The other thing that's happened is that the chassis is now reinforced with metal. Uh, as you can see, there's metal that goes along the whole bottom of this. Uh, and I did this because the back of the chassis right here was getting a lot of sag. Uh, it's greatly reduced now, but before when the chassis was sagging back, watch when I push down, you can see that those drive wheels lift up. So without the uh, body on, I really needed to have something that would hold this chassis up because keep in mind when the body goes on, I'm gonna put two screws from the back here. That's gonna hold the body up or sorry, uh, hold the chassis up into the body, and that's going to get rid of any sag that's in the rear. However, when I want to test the truck without the body, I need it to move. So as you can see, these tires are now on the ground. If I move the spur gear, you can see that they do move. Now, without the weight of the batteries, there's not a lot of traction. So this truck really needs to be used with both batteries placed in. The LiPo goes up front, the nickel metal hydrate goes in the rear. Once the body sets on, it's got a ton of weight to it. Okay, so right here we've got the seven cell nickel metal hydride. Of course, this is a pretty heavy battery, so it puts a lot of weight over these rear uh, axles. And then we've got the 3S LiPo up front. Now the LiPo just barely fits because you can see here that this is actually the uh, shape of the cab of the fire truck body itself. So when the cab fits over, you can see that uh, here the body gets narrower. So this battery just fits inside. And I have put the body on to test that it works, and it does, as you guys saw with the uh, water demonstration earlier, uh, it did fit over it, so there's no worries there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power it up. I'm gonna grab the transmitter. 
Here is our transmitter. I'm going to power it on. I'm going to power the truck on. Everything fires up. As you guys can see, I've got it selected to model one. So this truck, or sorry, this transmitter can actually still work with multiple vehicles if I just select it to a different model. Let's test the steering out. Steering is perfect. Now let's go over here to the transmission. As you can see, there's a little bit of slippage on the table. Um, the traction of the wheels is not fantastic. That's again, because the, the body is not on, there's not that extra weight over those axles. But it's still a smooth trans transmission uh, regardless. And then the pump. So the pump is gonna be powered on this little switch right here. This is an all or nothing switch. And as you can see, the servo, when I hit it, the servo comes down on that pressure switch. So let's go ahead and do that again. All right, and you can hear the pump is turning on. So there we go. Now this is the inlet side. This side is going to be connected to the water source. And then this side of the pump over here is going to be where the water is coming out. So the water uh, hose is actually going to have to make a pretty significant bend. Uh, so that way it can come out of this outlet, come back here and then up the ladder. Now, when I tested it on the deck, it was bent and it still was able to produce a fantastic flow of water. So I'm not going to uh, really worry about that bend there because it doesn't seem to be affecting it. I'm also just gonna show you this thing weighs a ton and that's without the body. If I pick it up, I say it's easily at least 15, maybe 20 pounds. It's really heavy. At the time of this filming, I'm still waiting for a shipment of lights because the lights that I ordered originally, uh, when I got them in the mail, they were actually not all of the ones that I ordered because they became unavailable uh, after I ordered them. So I needed to make a reorder for the lights that are gonna go up top on the body. So we're gonna have two back here, four up here, and then the two tail lights that are gonna go on the back. Um, but right now I do have a few lights that are already on here. Just take a look at how much space this body takes up on the shop table. And this is a pretty large countertop. So it's really big. Um, what we've got here is we've got the water hose. This is not, um, the nozzle I was expecting to use. I might still change it up, but it works really well. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's better than nothing. Um, so the water tube goes up through the whole ladder, and then when I flip the body over on its side, you guys can see that the water tube then comes down here through a little holder, and then this is the end that will plug into the pump. As you can see, that's the kind of bend that it has to make. Now this water line is far more discreet uh, than the original fire truck. If I go over here to the original fire truck, you can see this one has the water line going up through the top of the ladder and then it comes around the back of the ladder uh, into the bottom of the truck. So the new fire truck has got quite a big difference here. Also just take a look at the size comparison. Let me get I think I have a piece right here actually. This is a piece of the tubing that is going in the new fire truck and that is the original on the old fire truck. Which this fire truck still works by the way. There's nothing wrong with this fire truck although I did steal the light module, uh, control module from this truck to use in the other one because I want to make it kind of more cost effective at the moment uh, and once I get you know both trucks up and ready to go I'll get another light module for this one. But that's just a big size comparison for the two different trucks. Now right here is our uh, light module. This is the one I took from the other truck. It's from My Trek RC. One of the best light modules that I've had, the controller here, UF7 controller. Uh, right now I've got the side body flashing uh, lights and then I've got the two headlights up front. And I really like the headlights on this truck because they're actually in a light bucket rather than just LEDs sticking out of the front of the body. So they're very nice. And then by far what I think is possibly the coolest thing that I did throughout this build, and I know there's a lot of cool things that have happened throughout this build, but this one is really, really cool. What happened was I bought the RC four-wheel drive uh, winch control unit, the wired winch control unit, to use as a three-stage switch. 
So that way, uh, kind of like a winch, uh, when I hit this switch here, I could go up and down with the ladder, uh, just like you would do with a winch. And, you know, the motor that's inside of this gearbox for the, the ladder is pretty close to the size of the one that would be in a winch. So really nothing, uh, you know, out of the ordinary. But unfortunately, that winch controller is not working. When I got it, it I plugged it in, everything should have worked, but it just did nothing. And I can show you guys over here, right here, is the winch controller and it's still in its box because it actually didn't work for me. So I contacted RC4 Old Drive and they're not going to be able to do anything for me because it's not being used in a conventional way. And while I understand that, it is a little bit frustrating because I know the product didn't work. I did a voltage test coming out of the uh, outlet side of that unit and there was no voltage. Even though I explained that to them, uh, they weren't able to do anything for me, so I had to come up with another solution. And what I did was I hacked an old steering servo to actually turn into a winch controller and therefore be able to power my ladder. What I did was I opened up the uh, steering servo, I took the potentiometer that's inside, and I'll do a video on this later on, a uh, custom video for you guys, uh, just on how I did this, because it's very cool. Uh, I turned the potentiometer just enough so that way the motor within the servo would actually stop turning. Then I hot glued that uh, so that way it would stay like that. And then basically what you have is just an electrical cutoff in between uh, the servo and the outlet of the power. So when I hit the switch, it actually acts as a winch controller and can raise and lower my ladder just like a winch controller would. And you could do this for an actual winch on your rock crawler. Uh, for, or for any other project. So I just put it in the uh, box of an old servo here too, so that way it stays somewhat waterproof. Um, we've got the wire here that's gonna go to our receiver, and then we've got the two uh, JST plug uh, wires right here going to the motor within the ladder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the plugs, uh, these two plugs into the chassis, so that way you guys can see everything motorized up and then hopefully my lights come soon. They should be here in the next day or two. And then we're gonna pick this video back up when they get here. It would help a lot if I plugged the battery in. There we go. So what's gonna happen now is uh, the, the light unit will actually run through its little sequence. You might've caught the uh, flash here out of the side. So what happens is the uh, UF7 controller has to run through its little sequence uh, before it can actually supply power to the lights. Now if I come around front, you guys can see the headlights are actually working and look how nice those are. That's really awesome right there. And then when I go into the uh, transmitter and I hit the button right here, you guys can see that the side lights are now on. And these are just, you know, uh, regular flashing lights. I have them in a staggered pattern. The lights that'll be on top will look a lot better, uh, although these don't look bad at all. You guys can see it's just a tiny little, I wanna say they're three millimeter uh, LED bulbs. So I'm gonna keep those on, and now we're gonna power up the ladder. Okay, so the three-stage switch is in a neutral position, and now here we go. Check that out. Isn't that just awesome? Ladder goes up and down. I don't need to assist it by hand. The motor is plenty powerful in there. And uh, if I want to bring it back down, I'm just going to use my hand here to... That's great. It's so smooth. It's very responsive. Uh, I'm really glad that I was able to figure out that hack there uh, to turn a steering servo basically just right into a winch controller. So all in all, very cool stuff. I'm gonna power the truck down now. I'm gonna leave the video off right here and then in maybe about two days, hopefully, uh, at the most three days, I should receive the li those lights. So I'll come back when I get those. Finally, I got the next shipments of lights. It's been three days since I did this video last and uh, I'm really glad that I have these now because I thought I was going to have them all in my original order and then, you know, they just didn't all show up. In the past three days though, since I picked up the camera last and worked on this, I did paint the wheels red 
and I think that really adds a great fire truck look. The other side is red in the exact same way. It's definitely going to add a much nicer look to the truck rather than just being a dark gray. And uh, yeah, so now let's go ahead and get these lights in and then we can give this truck its final testing before it's ready to put out fires. And check it out, the truck is done. This thing is awesome. I finally have it ready to run. I'm in the garage right now because it's actually really cold outside and uh, it's also a little breezy so I don't want the wind to affect how well you guys can hear me. What I did was I added some stickers on the truck. These stickers were included with the MyTrick RC light kit. So we've got some engine stickers, some, uh, some volunteer fire company stickers, uh, and then we've also got the uh, lights added up on the top of the roof. Those are all done. You guys will see those in a minute. And uh, we're going to hook up some water to it. We're going to let it drive around the, uh, the garage a little bit. And then we're going to shoot some water out so that way you guys get the full demonstration at the end of this project. Here we go. I'm going to prepare the truck to get water. So that requires me to remove the center cap and then remove this side panel where I can access the water inlet. I'm going to remove this red cap here and then we can hook up our water hose. All ready to flow water. Here we go. And there we go, it is finally done. That was a full demonstration for you, a little drive around the garage. I do think it can handle a little bit of off-road, but we'll do another video very soon of it going through some different terrain out on the street and maybe in some grass if it can handle it. Uh, of course, we're gonna have to do a fire suppression test at some point with this truck. Uh, of course, that'll be in the future. You might've noticed how quickly the pump went through a liter of water. It really just guzzles it down uh, in less than seven seconds, really. Um, it's really incredible how fast it goes. So we're definitely going to have to have a big source of water for this truck to pull from. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this build series and maybe inspired a little bit of creativity for some of your own projects. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, share it around so that way you guys can spread the word about this fire truck because I think it's a really unique project uh, and I hope that other people can enjoy taking a look at it. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you guys in the next one on the RC Genius.